Hello. Uh -huh. Okay. So, hello from me, Hanna Olenius, and the NAPA people team. And uh, thanks very much for joining our uh, webinar on coaching culture creation at NAPA, which is a global maritime software company located here in uh, Ruoholahti, Helsinki, and in different locations around the world. Um, coaching um, and coaching style leadership are trendy concepts in today's HR landscape and um, often spoken, up, spoken about um, in conjunction with self-management especially. But what is coaching exactly? And what do we mean by having a coaching culture within an organization? Moreover, how can you create coaching culture? Well, uh, this webinar aims to demonstrate to you how we've gone about this at NAPA. And we've created a short uh, pre-recorded coaching demonstration video for you because we figured that the best way to convey the idea behind coaching is to see it in action. Then I will give you a short recap of the concrete actions we've taken here at NAPA towards the coaching culture creation. And to conclude, I will chat with um, my colleagues about their experiences with coaching, both from uh, the perspective of an employee and the perspective of a people manager or HR manager, um, who looks at the things from a slightly wider angle and assesses the uh, impacts of coaching on the whole of the personnel. But uh, first, to uh, give you a context in which all of this is placed upon, I will give the stage to my um, dear team member Tuulikki, who will um, outline the business context for you and introduce NAPA as a company to you. So Tuulikki, are you ready to go ahead? Mm, yes, Anna, thank you. So, um, very shortly uh, about NAPA. Uh, NAPA was founded already over 30 years ago and uh, at this moment we have around 190 employees in different uh, in 10 different countries. Uh, next please thank you Anna. and uh, <clears throat> our main office is uh, in Helsinki and uh, here on this slide, you can see our global presence, our offices around the world. And yes, next slide, please. Thank you. And about NABA as an organization, uh, we have three different business entities and also business support. And uh, in all of these entities, we have three functions uh, services, sales, and development. And uh, so the, about our employees, many NAPA employees are, are experts of software development and naval architecture, uh, but of course also from other professional backgrounds. And we all manage, uh, we all work in self-managed teams. That's about it very shortly, and now I give the stage back to Hanna, who will continue with the coaching topic. Okay. So uh, next up, we have the coaching demo video for you. I will shortly start uh, playing it to you, and I will also make uh, short pauses uh, throughout the video just to give you um, a brief explanation um, as to what's um, happening in the coaching. Just bear with me, I'm not so uh, accustomed to using Zoom. Do let me know that you're able to um, uh, hear the sound on this on this video. Um, 
Um, I'm currently unable to press play due to the fact that this. Here we go. Okay, what do you have in your mind to uh, discuss today? Uh, well, as the topic for the coaching today, I'd like to speak with you about my um, continuous urge to respond to messages that I get immediately after I've got them. And mm. same applies for emails. So I, I guess I'd like to um, plan my my use of time a bit more effectively and, and stop being as reactive as I am at the moment. Mm -hmm. So so you react or you have the urge to react to your emails and messages as soon as possible and you would like to manage it better? That is correct, yes. Okay, and and what benefit does it actually bring to you if you are able to control your urge and uh, plan your time management better? Mm, I think uh, the plans, uh, my own plans that I've made uh, towards conducting uh, my work days and my work weeks would actually stick a lot better. Um, if mm. I wasn't as, as reactive as I am right now, um, it would probably bring me um, more sense of control and and bring me the feeling of, of um, being in the driver's seat um, for the usage of my time. Mm -hmm. You, you you nicely explained about the benefits you get out of it, but um, how do you know that uh, when when you have reached this goal? I think um, the the plans and the timelines for for th uh, getting cer certain things done um, would become a lot more reliable, I guess, mm -hmm. and probably the feeling within myself um, would be calmer and and more in harmony something like that i would expect all right and could, could you take me through what's happening at the moment with with your urge at the moment uh, well, um, as you know, we have many communication channels these days. Um, in addition to email, there is Teams and, and some um, social media channels for, for corporate environments and, and um, all of this. So what's happening at the moment is that um, especially when a message uh, comes through via Teams, mm -hmm. I do, uh, when I see that um, notification popping up, I usually do then stop what I'm doing and, and go to Teams to respond. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much like uh, writing responses to emails um, as and when they come. Um, not so much according to uh, the the priority level that they carry. Mm -hmm. So that's what's happening mm -hmm. right now. Okay, and when you try to respond uh, to the messages immediately or replying the emails immediately, uh, and you also mentioned that it's maybe not necessarily based on the priority. So mm. when these things happen, uh, how do you feel? Um, in parts, I actually feel good because I'm aware that somebody has approached me uh, because they need something from me. And if I'm able to deliver and give that to them, um, more or less immediately, I know that the other person can move forward with whatever um, it is that they're doing at that time. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's nice to, um, in a way, know that others are experiencing me uh, being responsive and helpful. 
towards them. Mm -hmm. But of course, the downside of it is that um, it can uh, kind of mess up the, the plans that I've made for the for the day, and um, uh, some other things might get delayed, or that I lose focus in what I was doing uh, prior to receiving that message. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. And uh, how does this affect uh, people around you? Let, let's say your closest team. Well, my my um, own team, um, I guess um, it's affecting them in a good way because they are needing something from me and when they, when they get it, uh, they can then progress with their own things. Mm -hmm. So um, that's the, the plus side of it. Um, when I don't respond to messages immediately or, or the times that I haven't uh, for whatever reason, um, it can create some bottlenecks in in our doing. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, not necessarily mainly to me, but mainly to the other person. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's pause there for a moment. Uh, could you kindly indicate to me that you are still hearing my voice? I have literally no idea. Yes, we can hear your voice. Okay, great. So, um, uh, what typically happens at the start of a coaching session is that the topic uh, for the coaching is introduced and uh, the coachee starts to explore different sides of the topic or the issue together with the coach. Um, key questions at this point uh, could be what's happening right now, uh, what would be happening if the issue was uh, resolved, and what are the impacts of the topic or the issue for the coachee themselves or people around them? All right. Uh, you, you, you kind of went through like what you want to achieve through this session. And then you also explained about the benefits you, uh, you will get if mm -hmm. you reach the goal. And then you also explained how it affects you or how do you feel and also how it feels for your immediate colleagues. Uh, so considering all these things, uh, what do you think you can do next? What are the choices you have? Uh, I could, um, I think I could limit my own access to these different communication channels during the times I'm intending to focus on something. So in practice, this would possibly mean that I close teams altogether during the times and, and mm -hmm. um, that I'm um, focusing on something else. So be a, a, a little braver in, um, in making myself available to um, the people in our organization. Okay. What else could you do? Mm. I could maybe exercise my own judgment in terms of defining the priority for, for different things rather than, than um, approaching the whole thing with the objective of getting the inbox cleared, for instance. Mm -hmm. So having the inbox uh, relatively um, clean can bring this sense of, of uh, having control over the situation. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not necessarily the case if other things outside the messages are, are being jeopardized mm -hmm. right. through doing that. If one of our particip participants today in the webinar uh, come and ask you, like, how could they manage their time and, and uh, 
and control their urge to reply to the messages and emails. Uh, what would be your advice? Mm. Well, first and foremost, I would, before charging into giving any concrete advices, I would probably feel the urge to offer them some empathy because oh. I can very much relate to this this issue and I, I think generally um, uh, this tends to be uh, quite the generic issue of, of these current times in, in working lives of people. Um, what would I actually tell them to do then? That's um, a tough question. Um, it would probably be something along those lines um, of the things I already mentioned. Mm -hmm. So um, be a bit more structured regarding organizing of, of the time available and then um, then um, no fears in, in um, um, making judgment calls of your own in terms of um, prioritizing things. Mm. So, so obviously um, the priority order of things cannot be so that it's always the uh, priority of someone else that overrides mm. your own. Yep. So, so something like that, but it is a tricky, um, uh, tricky situation to manage for sure. Mm. Okay, I'm pausing again for a moment. And um, in the uh, mid section um, of the coaching, the coachy, um, the coach helps the coachy to map out the different options they have in relation to that issue and um, encourages the coachy to envision a solution to that issue. All right, considering uh, the two options you mentioned and the advice you gave to our uh, participants today. So what can be the next concrete thing you can actually do from these choices? Um, well, rather than making any elaborate plans for managing this situation, I think I will just simply close teams down uh, the next time I'm, I'm uh, focusing on something that suffers from interruption. So I will start to be bolder in, in simply closing the program and making myself um, not so readily available at all times. And when can you start doing that? I can start doing that as of today. So, which is great, actually. It doesn't require um, anything outside of my own personal mm. sphere to to do. So, I can I can start as of today. That that sounds really good. All right. So, towards the end of the session. So, what are you taking away from this? Mm. Um. I'm taking away the idea that uh, chatting to a coach is um, helpful because you can kind of share the pain uh, with somebody rather than struggling with the issue alone. And um, I'm also taking away the, the thought that um, uh, that um, there are other things that can be done about a situation. Um, the trick is not to fall into the, the victim trap of thinking that there is, there isn't anything that you can mm. do about the situation. Okay, and um, as you could see at the end, the coach commits the coachee uh, for action based on the coaching conversation. 
So coaching is not just about casually chatting with a colleague. It always aims for some kind of movement or action taking based on the coaching discussion. All right. Let's go back to the presentation, which hopefully you can see up on your screens now. So that was our coaching demo video for you. And uh, now moving on to our experiences of implementing coaching culture here at Napa. And uh, to begin with, um, it would uh, seem useful to consider why coaching should take place in a workplace. Hannah, uh, excuse me, we do not see the slides. Okay. All right, let's do this again. Just bear with me. Is it there now? Yes. Okay. How can I get back? Okay. Let's try once more. As you can see, we do not use Zoom here at Napa. I'm much more familiar with Teams. Okay, so um, as I was saying, uh, coaching is uh, very well suited as a working method for um, self-managed organization model. Um, because it encourages becoming more self-aware, uh, taking more responsibility and becoming more effective in one's doing. Coaching can also um, inspire us to create more meaningful experiences in our working lives. Um, because we don't, do not just blindly execute what we've been told to do. Uh, but instead, we stop um, and think about the reasons and motivations for our doing. Coaching uh, provides a support tool uh, for professionals in self-management, where the traditional um, hierarchical support from the supervisor or the manager is no longer in place. It um, increases the potential of the organization by um, empowering individual employees and teams to um, take action towards improvements and common goals. And um, uh, finally, it provides an objective and um, impartial thinking partner for our professionals at NAPA. Um, then the concrete steps. Um, what we have actually done towards implementing coaching at NAPA. So uh, we've had um, four in-house coaches trained formally at Henley Business School. And then um, uh, these uh, in-house coaches are now offering um, coaching to all Naparians um, in the organization, regardless of their um, job roles. We then had a, a larger group of Naparians attending um, an external uh, training on um, coaching by a selected service provider and uh, subsequently started to organize these um, internal coaching meetups where the um, former coaches um, train and practice with the um, coaching community of Napa to empower and enable um, coaching a style communication among colleagues in our organization. And this was all done with the, attent with the intent of making coaching part of every day at NAPA. Um, we are offering coaching via an internal leadership as a service platform. Um, and we've also combined coaching uh, with other more traditional development tools such as um, the 360 feedback and coaching. Um, we have also uh, started to develop different kinds of uh, team coaching activities which uh, seem to be gaining momentum at the moment quite nicely. 
and um, not forgetting all the internal promotion via our communication channels, such as the internet, blog posts, company staff info, and um, something called net talk, which is very similar to those uh, TEDx talks you can uh, watch uh, from YouTube for those that are familiar with them. And now I have the pleasure of uh, talking with um, two uh, colleagues of mine. Uh, we have um, <clears throat> Karina Pietare, um, lead test engineer for Napa's Hello design. Hello to you, all of you. <laughs> yeah, uh, Karina works as a lead um, test engineer for Napa's design solutions. And we also have Suvi Alavilo, my uh, nearest and dearest colleague, uh, who works as a people manager at Napa. Hello. All right, so uh, let's start with you, Karina. Um, how does Napa's coaching culture appear to you as it is now? Well, as I see it, uh, to some extent, uh, coaching culture has always been present in Napa, although we didn't identify it as such. There has always been trust in our capabilities. So personally, I have never experienced micromanagement or strong criticism in Napa. Communication with our supervisors has always been more on a, about asking questions, so such questions as what would be the best way to achieve this, or what are our options, and then coming to a common understanding. And uh, now coaching principles uh, are even more built into our internal processes and uh, everyday working life. We can book one-to-one uh, -one sessions with our house coaches. We apply coaching the methods in our meetings, um, especially retrospectives. Coaching happens also informally, just by talking to our colleagues and discussing different topics with them. Well, everything said, uh, of course, there is always uh, space for improvement. Uh, there are still quite a few Naparians who are not familiar with the topic or with the term and uh, are not aware of the benefits of coaching. So I guess now the main focus would be on bringing awareness of, of coaching uh, in Napa. Mm -hmm. Right. So based on what you say, I gather that Napa was uh, quite um, well prepared to receive a working method such as coaching. Yes, uh, exactly. When I came to Napa around eight years ago, I was expecting uh, some instructions or objectives uh, to be provided from my supervisor, but at the end, I just had to come up with the tasks myself and uh, with a way to implement them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, for what purpose uh, you see that uh, the coaching culture is at Napa? Um, well, as you have mentioned, uh, we have adopted uh, self-managed organization model nearly five years ago. And since then, we do not have any managers or supervisors. Each Naparian has a right to choose uh, a new career path or assume a new role and uh, make important decisions by himself or herself. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we do not have uh, supervisor-led uh, development discussions anymore, Coaching uh, would uh, contribute greatly when choosing the right alternatives and setting achievable goals. It could also be used when introducing the new employees to Napa. This way, the newcomers would learn from the start of making uh, important decisions that influence their working life. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very interesting. Thank you. Now, uh, Suvi, uh, turning to you, um, 
what kind of an impact has coaching training had on you professionally, especially thinking about your role as a as a people or HR manager? Thank you, Hanna. Uh, we can say that I have had I don't have had that extensive training like you perhaps have had, but um, some external training also for coaching. And I think for me personally, uh, it has been the change of mindset and improving my communication skills at the same time so because um, as an HR person I often have this strong tendency to solve challenges or questions that people might come up with me to towards me and then um, instead of like aiming always to fix the, or solve the issue uh, with these skills that I have acquired from coaching uh, I think I can become more active listener in those situations. And at the same time as being more active listener, it also allows me to learn from more from the other person and their perspectives on that topic and matter. And um, I think it brings more to the table when there's this coaching um, integrated in those communication situations. And also, at the same time, I, I can then support the other person to take more proactive role in order to find the best solution for them. And then the end result is that they can take the next step, feeling motivated and comfortable doing the things that we now together as an end result come up with. So I think that that's, that is a concrete example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in addition to um, helping others, um, would you say that coaching enhances your own communication skills as well? Yeah. You mentioned the active listening and so yeah, on. Yeah, and I, I think it requires training. So it's not something that you, I, I think, because within the coaching, you there's a certain theory behind it and methodologies and, and how to actually, like shown in the demo video, there's certain kind of questions that takes those situations forward and without providing those ready answers. So therefore it's a, like a change of mindset. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how does Napa's coaching culture appear to you as it is now? Um, I think Karina also said very nicely about coaching culture, how it appears to us at the moment, but I think uh, for me, it's, it's yeah, it's in a blooming phase, and I think because we have this daily basis uh, happening coaching within the teams, like Karina said, that there's already good coaching skills happening on a daily basis, and because we have this self-managed organization without no bosses or managers as such, but I think still there is need for leadership, need for feedback and support. And therefore, the coaching style very nicely fits into that table and improving those communication situations. And we can then have a better understanding and mutual. And the end result is that people are then more motivated to continue forward with the um, shared thought that what is to go forward, for example, in certain decisions. Mm. And yes. I think it's very empowering at the moment. And then we have also the other uh, kind of training, uh, coaching happening, taking place is this, we have the, like you yourself, is uh, for certified coaches and we have this internal coaching services available and then I think it's very nice that it's uh, available globally so like it's shown that we have uh, presence in many countries so this is now not only for Finland and it's around the world available and sharing these good practices and and I think that that is very nice thing to see at the moment at Napa mm. although, although fairly new this internal in-house coaching services, but the, the positive feedback is very nice and I feel it's very welcomed. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. I think by offering to uh, uh, offering coaching to all of our employees as opposed to only selected few, I think mm-hmm. we can also reap the benefits of the, the full benefits of coaching as an organization. Yeah, and also that quite many people are actually trained at least to some extent. And I think that also improves the coaching culture overall experience because then like Karina said that we need to share more information what coaching is and by doing training then of course it allows that to to kind of share the knowledge of coaching Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right so um uh, Karina uh, what kind of uh, coaching services have you uh, found uh, beneficial for yourself Well, here I could mention the one-to-one coaching session that we had with you, Hanna, quite recently. Uh, some background information about it. Um, uh, in addition to my main role as a test lead, uh, I have some minor other roles already. And a few months ago, I decided uh, to assume yet another role as a technical writer. So naturally, I was uh, a bit concerned about how I will cope and how I will manage my time. So I decided to try out a coaching session with our in-house coach, Napa, uh, Hanna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. On, on, all in all, it was a very pleasant uh, conversation, of course, and we came up with some uh, not major, but uh, quite achievable goals. Uh, for example, delegating some minor responsibilities to other team members. Well, also this session had a kind of a therapeutic impact on me. You know, we were joking that uh, coaching is a form of work therapy. Yes, it can be. And I think we all need it at times <laughs> as well. Um, okay, so um, how is uh, coaching, um, how does it differ from um, supervising or, or managing or being managed? How do you feel? Well, I feel that uh, coaching is uh, quite an opposite thing to supervising. A supervised person gets directions and instructions from above and uh, has little say in uh, what has to be done. Whether, whereas uh, coached uh, individuals, uh, they can maximize their performance by selecting uh, goals and uh, alternatives that suit them best. So uh, coaching sessions uh, do not focus on your limitations or past performance. They rather help you to have a glimpse uh, at the future and think of the steps uh, how to get there and uh, live up to your full potential. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well summarized. I, I would also describe coaching as, as being forward focused and, and looking at the options going forward as opposed to analyzing uh, the past. So on to you again, Suvi. Um, how would you like to see Napa's coaching culture develop even further? Well, at the moment we do have this uh, very active coaches uh, and the coaching team and that is developing our coaching culture even further but if something then because we have also this uh, in-house coaching services for individuals and teams so maybe if there is any hesitations or uncertainty that would reflect for example choosing the topic for coaching session or Maybe we could help with that. So perhaps providing certain kind of themes for, especially for teams, if they they are using this in-house coaching services. So mm. pick up a theme that would be already selected and 
maybe one thing that I, I would like to see, and I think Karina also mentioned about this new new Naparian joining um, at Napa. So I think including coaching um, part of the onboarding journey so that maybe mm. every new Naparian would have this uh, as a part of their onboarding plan to um, have a one coaching session with our in-house coach and so that to get the understanding of what co coaching is actually and maybe that would even lower the barrier to then place another work working therapy <laughs> session when it's needed so mm. with that and just like more user experience and people utilizing the support that they actually have available so it's very nice Absolutely. All great ideas just waiting to be implemented in the future. Um, okay, so what's um, your advice for an organization pl either planning to develop internal um, coaching services or, or uh, possibly uh, considering purchasing them outside as an external service? Yeah, I think it all starts with the highly motivated and interested people. So I think here the first starting point should be that it's not something that somebody yet again tells that we need this and you should do that. But instead of like somebody who is interested about the theory and behind, for example, coaching. So because it requires that and some kind of external professional training from people who who understand the context and then start building from there and maybe having this kind of team of people who are um, interested to actually implement these kind of things to the company culture and promoting it and providing the services. And actually, I think during the time we launched this in-house coaching training I, I remember when we had those discussions that how much it um, it affects for example if you hear certain kind of conversations and if it's how time consuming and all these kind of issues that brought up during that time but I think it's well worth it at least it has been for us and and just to be ready and open for the change and how how it will affect also the daily working because if there's no the person who is saying all the ready thought instructions and answers so it might even be a bit take a longer time solving certain kind of questions and challenges but then the end result is that people are more motivated and i think on the same board or on the on the same ship going forward moving mm. forward so i think it starts from there and if there's need to uh, kind of convince some kind of management that this is nice then maybe collecting experiences from other companies and thinking would it be suitable for our company mm. okay um, all right, I see somebody raising their hand uh, there, but um, uh, we will take the questions right at the end of the presentation, uh, which is soon. So not to worry, we will um, get to the questions and comments uh, slightly later on. All right, then. Uh, thank you, Sylvie, and thank you, Karina. Thanks for sharing your thoughts and your insights on coaching with me and, and the audience here today. All right, um, then um, we're approaching the end of our, our presentation. And uh, just to recap um, briefly what we have observed as the positive outcomes of coaching. So first, uh, coaching has been well received. Um, it's been the best rated in internal service in that um, LAS platform uh, that I mentioned a couple of slides ago. Um, the feedback that we've received of coaching indicates that colleagues really appreciate and value being listened to. 
And uh, I think we have um, been able to observe an increased engagement and, and a sense of meaning via this kind of a professional um, development tool, such as coaching. And there has been an improved way of communicating among colleagues too. Uh, to balance the positive with the challenges um, would be to say that um, being able to convey coaching in an understandable way to everyone can be challenging, um, mainly because in coaching we can use several different kind of tools and techniques. So therefore the experience of um, of a coaching session is hardly ever identical uh, to the um, to another one. So uh, that's why the experience of coaching can vary from person to person. Um, secondly, uh, challenging um, is uh, for colleagues to find the time um, for coaching among their busy work days and, and schedules. And certainly we also need to take into consideration the cultural differences between uh, the different NAPA locations globally in, um, in the con kind of coaching that uh, we offer to our employees. So, to that end, uh, we are now um, at the questions, comments, and and thoughts and experiences part of um, 